before I comment on this, I want to just I want to read a passage from the autobiography of Malcolm X. Um, probably the best book that I've ever read. You know, um, but because I'm because over the course of the next next few days, I'm just going to be reading you passages, and we're gonna I want to dissect this. But I want to I want to I want to read this passage. And this is pretty much from like the last few pages. So bear with me as I as I read this, and then I'll then comment. <clears throat> Anyway, now, each day I live as if I'm already dead. And I tell you what I would like for you to do. When I am dead, I say it's that way because from the things I know, I do not expect to live long enough to read this book in its finished form. I want you to just watch and see if I'm not right in what I say, that the white man in his press is going to identify me with hate. I'll make you, He will make use of me dead as it made use of mere life as a convenient symbol of hatred. And that will help him to escape facing the truth that all I've been doing is holding up a mirror to reflect, to show the history of unspeakable crimes that his race has committed against my race. You watch, I will be labeled as at best an irresponsible black man. I've always felt about this accusation that the black leader whom white men consider to be responsible is invariably the black leader who never gets any results. You only get action as a black man if you are regarded by the white man as irresponsible. In fact, this much I had learned when I was just a little boy. And since I've been some kind of a leader of black people here in the racist society of America, I have been more reassured each time the white man resisted me or attacked me harder because each time made me more certain that I was on the right track in the American black man's best interests. The racist white man's opposition automatically made me know that I did offer the black man something worthwhile. Yes, I have cherished my demagogue role. I know that societies often have killed the people who have helped to change those societies. And if I can die having brought any light, having exposed any meaningful truth that will help to destroy the racist cancer that is malignant in the body of America, then all of the credit is due to Allah. Only the mistakes have been mine. So I wanted just to read that. Just gain some clarity, and also, and I think what is interesting is when he talks about the line of the leaders, because as I, because I, because literally when I read it, I read it again, because I was like, oh my gosh, because I grew up in Nigeria, so I was born in London, and literally when I was two or three, I then moved. To Nigeria, so I did my nursery school and my primary school, and my growing up, well, my growing up in my early years in in Nigeria, and all throughout my time in Nigeria, I'd never heard of anyone known as Martin Luther King. I I never knew, and then I remember um, the release of the Malcolm X film, and I said to myself, "Why is it such a big deal here in Nigeria? Why is it such a massive deal about this man? And who is this man? And they just seem to be a level of intrigue." and excitement with regards to this film. And it was very much a big deal in Nigeria. So I don't know what was happening in the Western world, but I just know in, in Nigeria in the early 90s, it was a big deal. And then I come to England and you know we hear the I Have a Dream speech, we hear all these things about Martin Luther King, the savior um, and so forth. I remember this is just a young child. And I remember there was one time I was sitting in chapel and there was this this guy came up to speak. This one of my this one of these white teachers in in my school in England, and he talked about how he he quoted Martin Luther King and how he was one of his heroes. And I, I said to myself that every time I passed this guy in school, every time I looked at him, he always gave me a very icy look. He always gave me a very cold look, and it was a look as if that he just felt uncomfortable relating to me or being with me. And I always say to myself that a lot of people who I saw quote Martin Luther King or talk about Martin Luther King were either racists or were not very comfortable around the black people. So I just said, and I said to myself that I knew about Malcolm X in Nigeria due, due to the film and just people talking about him. And I did not hear one single mention about Malcolm X throughout my studies. I heard everything about Martin Luther King, but I heard nothing about, about Malcolm X, who him and him were side, side by side way through the thick of it through the civil rights movement i said to myself that this this doesn't make sense this doesn't make sense and then once i now sort of began to read about malcolm x or talk about malcolm x 
he was just viewed as a hate figure. He was just viewed as this guy, hate, 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 white people, he's aggressive, the angriest man, the angriest man in the angriest black man in, 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 in America and so forth. You know, Martin Luther King was much more level-headed and then read me to what I, I read there. And then I was like, oh my God, it makes sense. If the person that's oppressing you is telling you who to follow and who your hero is, that's a problem. That's a red flag. But if your oppressor is trying to paint another man as problematic, a villain, a hateful, and so forth, pause. Just use your logic. Pause. And then reading this book, as I said, as I said this is one of the greatest books of all time because the journey that he takes in this is outstanding. And I do not think that you can find any man who has taken the kind of journey that he has. Please tell me. Literally, his his arc from where he started, where he began to where he ended, what he learned. He may have only lived, lived for 39 years, but my gosh, that's th th 39 years felt like a, a thousand years. But when you read this, you saw that he was that no, I don't hate all white people because he actually came in contact with white people that he actually saw, oh, no, these guys actually treat me like a human being. He hates white racist people. And he decided that, oh, no, maybe white people are not born racist, but they are born into a racist system, a racist environment. And he kept on saying this again and again. You know, I don't hear all, listen to what I'm saying. It's racist white people. It's the system of America that I hate. That is problematic, and we need to um, overthrow that. But then why isn't it, why aren't we taught that in schools? And as he said that, which is the sick thing, is these oppressive racist people don't want a mirror to be held up to, to, to their faces. So then, so then it just questions that, why do you force Martin Luther King towards me, but not Malcolm X? And then that's why black people, you've got to think, because again, Martin Luther King did, did, he did great, great things. He did great things, and I'm not going to be here to say, oh, Martin Luther King was useless. No, that guy, and and he he lost his, he lost his life for it. He lost his life for it. He put himself in line. So Martin Luther King was a great man who did many great things. But it's just never sat well with me that in these schools, with these white people who I knew were racist and who I knew had issues with me and didn't feel comfortable around me and would sort of make sly jokes, they'd be the first to say Martin Luther King was one of their heroes. Because what they want is someone that they can control, someone that does the revolution their way, someone that does the revolution that they can control. But what they don't want is someone that's not going to listen to what they're saying and is going to tell them exactly, you know, this is what you are. This is the, this is the disease that, that, that you have. And I just feel, because again, look, I mean, we're, we're going to break, break break this book down in several videos and, and live streams and everything, you know, because I didn't know that, they, I didn't know he went to Nigeria. I didn't know he went to Nigeria, he went to Ghana and everything. And they're just, they're, they're so, there's just so much in this book that even resonates with me personally. I'm sure for people who've read this book, one of the key chapters for me in this book, there's only a key chapter, one of the key chapters for me in the book is, is the chapter mascot. We will, we will break that down. But I just feel that, just in my own way, man, I feel to myself that I... And look, through my very small platform, my very small voice, I want to just, you know, correct the narrative of, of Malcolm X that what he was preaching and saying, this was the complete and utter truth. Because the real truth is ugly. It's not nice. It's not us thinking, goodbye. the truth is ugly. The, the truth is, is, is harsh. And you have to, into people's face, in, into the, the truth. And I just think that, you know, it is time to correct and write the narrative of Malcolm X. Because I said again, I waited. Because I remember, I think it was years ago, I was, yeah, it was years ago, I was sort of in a library and I saw the Malcolm X autobiography and I was bothered by it. I said, I don't think I'm ready yet. And this is something that I've been putting on for ages with that I, because I feel that I need to be mentally, psychologically, emotionally ready to read it. And I felt that with everything that's going on, 
and the kinds of stuff that I've been seeing, the conversations that we've been having, I felt that like this was the right time to read this book. Um, and as I said, that this this just just as a thinker and as a man, I mean, this is this is what like he's a he's a genius. He's a genius. We'll break it down. There are several things he said during the fifties and the sixties are still prevalent today, which is why I put him on the same level as Machiavelli and Machiavelli, the the, the, the the prince, because you are a true genius and you're truly special when you're thinking on a level that not other human beings think. You're like, that's 0 0.1, 0 0.2% of the population. We're like, psychologically, you're operating on a whole different level, which is how Machiavelli was operating, which is how we want to call Plato Socrates was, was operating, and it's how Malcolm X was operating, where right? your brain is tuned into something psychologically at a higher level. Which is why I just, as you know, this is required reading for everyone, for everybody. Everybody should read this, and don't and read the entire book because it's a journey. And he even keeps reminding people that what I'm saying now, remember, it's how I was feeling now, how I was feeling now. But just before I go, just a little tidbit here, and this is what I've always believed even before viewing this: how people say, you "No, know, Malcolm X, he, he was violent. He always, he always preached hate and everything." If a guy keeps spitting at your face and punching you and kicking you, you expect him to just come back at you smiling and begging for, for forgiveness or singing songs. But when you kick a guy and you smack a guy in the face and he then smacks you in the face, you're surprised? Or when he's angry and he just lashes out at anything, even your, your friends, you're surprised? That's Delusion. That is literally delusional. I'm <laughs> just we'll break it down, man. But I just want just to do that out there. That's um let's the media is, is a very sick, disgusting thing. And I think how they've portrayed Malcolm X without telling the full story of, of Malcolm X, I think is very sick. And I think just in my small way, I just think it is time to advocate in all schools they learn about Malcolm X. All schools, especially young black people. Everybody should learn about the truth of Malcolm X.